Okay, so they ran out of music, so I think I can start to talk. It's amazing to see that many people here. I was a little bit afraid because of the size of the room, but it's great to have you here. My name is Andreas Pöschel. I'm with BMW, and I'm responsible for Linux architecture and solutions, and uh, also for infrastructure as a service, and I'm the project lead for OpenStack at BMW. And I would like to take you with me on a journey through our way from the traditional classic IT to OpenStack. And I would like to share some puddles of mud we saw and we jumped into and we avoided some of them. And I hope you have some ideas afterwards uh, where you could go back home and use that. So uh, we've got an enterprise. I think everybody knows what BMW is doing. That's the good thing about BMW. I don't have to explain it. Uh, but what about the, the IT at BMW? Everybody knows the cars, but uh, we also have got an IT department, and it's not that small. It's uh, about 3,800 employees in the IT. And we are distributed all over the world in 50 locations in 26 countries but we have got a central IT from an organizational perspective. That means people are located somewhere, but they are all working together. They are all reporting to the same organization. And we support the employees, the people, the plants. We've got 30 production sites in 14 different countries. Uh, we've got the sales and finance department. And we also have research and development in five different countries. And Last but not least, we've got more than 116,000 people working for BMW. And we are supporting all those people and all those assets. We've got one huge data center in Munich, which is our enterprise data center. And we've got three regional ones in the States, in South Africa, and in Oxford. And we've got, <laughs> some years ago we called them data centers, now they are just disaster safe server rooms. Uh, they didn't change in size, it was just an, a naming convention. At every plant we've got two data centers to support the local uh, production there. And we also have got uh, external hosting in Iceland for our HPC servers for the number crunches. About 12,500 OS instances are operated by us, so not counting the clients, just the server instances, uh, Windows and Linux. And we're virtualizing since years. Uh, I think Windows, it's 2004, Linux, 2007. And we're virtualizing Windows on VMware and Linux on Xen, open source Xen, which comes with Slash. Because we love to use best of breed. Uh, at that size, you don't necessarily need to have just one vendor because you're operating it any way different. Uh, Linux guys will be Linux guys and Windows guys are Windows guys. You won't mix it. We've got some storage around, NAS, fiber channel based SAN, backup, archive, uh, lots of SAP instances, uh, lots of databases, and we still have the mainframe as probably a lot of enterprises. You can't get rid of that. It's just, it's just there. We evolved. Uh, I had some talks at OpenStack Summit, and I always said to me, IT is like a kitchen. In the past, you had a wood-fired stove where you made great pork with a nice crust. But it was hard to fire up. It took some time. So over time, we evolved. So we introduced the gas-fired stove, the electrical stove, we got some new tooling and it was more convenient. It was faster. We always improved, but we are still making pork with a crust. It's nothing bad about that. But sometimes you would like to have, for example, a plate arranged completely and heated up. This is where the microwave comes into the play. So this is the second curve. You've got the evolutionary part of the stuff you already have, and you've got the new part, not just faster, more convenient. It's something completely new. And you're doing it different there. And for some workloads, you will need this revolutionary part. So to us, there are always these two parts 
and they will be in parallel. Because even with a microwave, sometimes I would like to have pork with a crust, and I don't put it in the microwave. So uh, how did we start with that microwave part of IT? Uh, we had a project started four years ago, and first we tried to put everything we know into automation. We tried to automate processes. We tried to automate the integration, full integration of all the stuff, self-service portal. That sounded great. But to be honest, it was just the gas stove or the electrical stove. It was a fancy thing with a lot of bells and whistles, but still the same, the same stove. So we changed our mind. We saw it doesn't work out. We tried to create the full uh, environment there. We created databases, VMs, web servers, load balancers, documented that in CMDB, and uh, put it into this and that uh, backend process system. But it was really hard to maintain and to operate. It, it wasn't possible at all. So we made a cut and we said, now time, it's time for something different. Let's make a pure infrastructure as a service offering. This is where OpenStack came into play. Just pure infrastructure as a service. We don't do any pass services on top of it yet. We don't try to integrate everything into this OpenStack. No, OpenStack just provides VMs, storage, network, period. With the first project, we also created something like APIs. It was fun, as it usually is if, when you do something new, but it has been BMW specific. We had to create it, we had to maintain it, and none of the systems out there knew these BMW APIs. That's bad, because you would like to talk to them. And so we would uh, have been in the position where we had to create also the, the other systems around. This is where OpenStack gives us a great opportunity. It's a, it's a standard API, it's industry standard. Everybody knows it, all the automation systems around. They talk OpenStack APIs. And we learned, don't touch this stuff. Keep it as is. We don't want to have a BMW OpenStack, even if we could do it, maybe. But it doesn't make sense. Use it as is, and if you need a change, don't change it on your own. But tell someone, to change it upstream. We are not an IT company, so we don't want to do it on our own. So uh, this is where we talk to our distributor and tell him this functionality may be great, not just for us, also for other people. Let's change it upstream. And uh, we don't want to use OpenStack for everything. I see a lot of companies out there which see OpenStack, it's great, you have to be cloud to be good, the 10 myths of Gartner. Uh, no, just use OpenStack where it's appropriate. And just use OpenStack for those people who can deal with it from a personal perspective, they need some skill, and also from a workload perspective. They need to know how to operate that stuff, which workload to put on OpenStack. You cannot move over the old uh, style Oracle database to OpenStack and hope it, it gets better, no. Just use those workloads where it fits. Always remember stove, microwave, pork, plate. What are we using as a base product? We could use upstream. In general, yeah, it would be nice, but we are a quite small team working on OpenStack. We don't have the resources to test upstream packages, to try to integrate those, to decide which ones to use and which one to update. And if we come to an update, how to do that? So we've chosen a distributor. At the moment, we are using SUSE, SUSE Cloud 5, based, uh, Juno based. And uh, they take care of this testing, uh, QA, and support. Yes, uh, we don't get all the possibilities of OpenStack, but do we really need them? If yes, we tell the distributor because usually it's possible to do it. We, they just have to decide which functionality they could support. And they also use the upstream packages in general. And if they make something new, they give it back upstream. So to us, it's 
the best way to leverage OpenStack. And something that, which is very hard for us and where we ex also expect some issues is upgrades. At the moment, we are on Juno. There is Kilo around, there's Liberty around. Uh, how could we do that? We don't want to upgrade every six months. We are enterprise. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just hard to learn that because internally you need some approvals. You have to be sure that everything works together. So on one hand, we would like to do releases very often because we would like to have the newest features, the newest possibilities, the new improvements. On the other hand, eh, could it be once a year maybe? So this is where we have to find the right measure of upgrading and keeping the old state. And also, if we don't have the real need to upgrade, probably we won't do it. But we cannot wait too long, because otherwise uh, it will be really hard to do the next step. So when we started with OpenStack, compared to our old project, as I said, with our old first cloud project, we tried to integrate everything. We tried to integrate the technology. We tried to integrate processes. And we tried to integrate the usage and operation models. So we've got these three layers. In general, it's like technology, processes, and usage. And when we try to integrate OpenStack, we would have done it differently in the beginning, but now we learned it makes sense to integrate it a little bit where it's necessary and just to avoid the integration where it's of no use or where it's even uh, counterproductive. So if we don't really need a specific integration level, we avoid it now. Maybe we could integrate it later on, but let's start with a minimal set of integration. This gives you the possibility to start. If we would wait until we have answered all the questions, it would just take two years until we start, and all the projects out there who are in need of something like OpenStack wouldn't have the possibility to do that. So technology. We knew that it's not possible to keep everything as is. But on the other hand, it's not possible to start from scratch. We've got data centers, and we need some racks in the data centers we could fill with the new servers. So we're using the same network, we're using the same racks, we're using uh, the same tabling, and we are using some services. We put the service into the data center, and then we tried to start the installation. Uh, we talked to our network guys, and they said, eh, what you're doing with your east-west traffic on Ceph, that might be hard, uh, because our uh, topology is not suitable for that. Hmm. What to do? But we need a high-speed network, low-latency network there. So they had to f find a possibility to create a network specifically for us, which is not that easy, and we still have a long way to go to do that network integration. We said we were doing DHCP on our own. Uh, the network guys didn't find that really funny because uh, they also have a DHCP server running. So you have to find out where you could use the old services and where you are, need to separate that. And sometimes you don't think of these services unless you really start it and see that you fail. DNS. OpenStack takes care of names. Hey, great. But uh, when I would like to connect to this instance with my client, this client doesn't know that name because we've got an enterprise-wide DNS. How to deal with that? Uh, we could integrate OpenStack into the DNS, uh, have it in a special zone. Uh, the, this only works if you have a class C network. Sometimes we've got slash 25. And we have to find a different possibility. Our solution has been, we always need to tell the networking guys we need a new subnet. 
So they give us a subnet. They have to reserve it in CMDB, so nobody else is using that. We are not doing that very often. Uh, so we could also pre-allocate those addresses. As soon as we get a new network, we just pre-allocate the IP addresses in that network. CVM and the number. Cloud VM. In the past, we had something with Linux and Windows in the names, but hey, we don't know. So uh, we are just pre-allocating that stuff. It works for us. Maybe it works for somebody else too, but uh, this is still an issue how to integrate the DNS of uh, OpenStack into the enterprise-wide DNS. And having OpenStack as the master is not suitable in an enterprise environment. User and identity management. Yes, let's create users. Uh, they have new passwords. That doesn't make sense. We've got an active directory. We would like to integrate that. What about the different roles? We have the Active Directory as a front end in general, but we have some identity management systems in the back. So if new employees come in and uh, they get specific roles, they change uh, departments, everything is done automatically. And this system also knows the roles and the rights they have. We cannot integrate that into OpenStack at the moment. So we're just using authentication via Active Directory, but authorization is handled within OpenStack at the moment. We would like to change that. But therefore, we also need some role-based access control because we've got different roles, and it's not within, just within Active Directory if somebody is allowed to do something. We've got our uh, ITSM suite where all the incident change processes are, there are roles like uh, coordinate, change coordinator, change manager. They've got different rights to do something. Who is allowed to increase quota? Who is allowed to delete VMs? Starting, stopping is something for operations. Uh, deleting all of the operation guys or just some of them. Uh, increasing quota, who will do that? So we have to find a possibility to, to integrate all these different components with OpenStack. But again, not now. Let's start with the real important stuff. Let's keep it on a list. We will do it later. And we had CMDB. Everything at BMW runs via CMDB, Configuration Management Database. It's the central component of IT. Everything's documented there. If we create a new server, we first uh, document it in CMDB, this size, this type, SAP server for that plant, uh, and then everything within the automation layer of the classic IT gets uh, is uh, pulled from CMDB and created appropriately. We couldn't do that for the instances because uh, it takes so long to document that that the instance is not there anymore if you're finished documentation. Or uh, there are also other systems behind CMDB which replicate every six hours. Uh, that doesn't work out <laughs> at all. Uh, on the other hand, we need CMDB at least for the assets, because if I don't have an entry there, the technician doesn't know where to go to find that server. And if there's something wrong with the server, I would like to have somebody who could find the server and fix it. So we have to find the right measure to integrate that. How to document the stuff. Processes. Oh, we're really good at processes. We're Germans. Uh, they are, people don't like it, usually. Nobody likes processes, but on the other hand, they are necessary, and they help you to improve things. They make you fast, cheap, stable. But do you know if all of your processes are still necessary? I love the story of the 10 monkeys, the experiment. I don't know if everybody knows that. They had 10 monkeys in a, in a zoo, and they had a ladder in the middle and the banana on top. And whenever one of the monkeys tried to get the banana, the, the people there uh, poured them with cold water. So they very quickly learned, don't take the banana. And then they took one monkey out and a new one in. The new monkey saw the banana, tried to climb up the ladder, but the other monkeys pulled them back and beat them up. 
He didn't know why, but he learned, don't take the banana. And so they exchanged monkey by monkey. And at the end, they had 10 monkeys. All of them knew, don't take the banana. But nobody knew why. <laughs> and this is what we sometimes have with our processes. They are from a time where we needed the processes. But then organization changed, technology changed, workloads changed. But we still have the processes. Everybody knows how to follow the processes. But do we really need them? nowadays with a new workload, with a new environment, new organization. So we have to challenge all these processes if they are really necessary. We also have processes which doesn't fit in this open stack world, life cycle management of servers. We know everything about our classic servers, where they are, how long and who and what. It doesn't work in open stack. Because this poor guy who would need to do the lifecycle management for the instances, he would go crazy. Accounting. In the past, workloads changed quite slowly. You got a new server, you had it up and running for seven years, and then you put it down. It was sufficient to measure once in a month because the server didn't vanish. Uh, in OpenStack, it's different. If people knew when we were going to measure, they would switch off all the instances. And it was for free. Good thing for them, but uh, it doesn't make sense. On the other hand, we have to find new possibilities. People always talk about pay per use. Great idea. The more they use, the more you, they pay. But sometimes, for example, CI environments, I don't want to uh, have someone pay more just because he tested more. He should test. And if I charge him because he used a lot of CPU cycles, that's the wrong way to do it. So we also in the new world, we have to check if we are on the right track. And if we don't create processes which are in the wrong direction again. So this accounting is still something we don't really know. We had a, have got a model now based on reserved vCPU hours measured every five minutes, but charged or shown once a month. We sum it up, and only if you reserve CPUs, then you pay for it. And we have got three different models, the on-demand, reserved, and dedicated. Some of you might know that kind of model, uh, <laughs> as others are doing it, so let's try it again, uh, too. On demand means you always pay what you're, you're using. If you have uh, two days a month where you need your vCPUs, you just pay for these two days. OK, perfect. Others have uh, a base workload, and they move up and down a little bit. They could use the reserved one. Maybe it's like uh, with a, a mobile phone where you've got a plan where you get uh, 300 minutes included or something like that. And then you pay on top or the dedicated where you pay for a quota. It's cheaper per vCPU hour, but you could do whatever you like. And we have to learn with our customers. Uh, for example, the CI part, the CI guys told us, hey, you don't want to charge us by CPU cycle because they are reselling their CI to their internal customers. And they said, we cannot charge them or uh, uh, let them pay more just because they did something. So you have to learn with the customers. It depends on your workloads. Yeah, uh, where it is uh, quite crucial to t have a close look is where this new environment touches the old world, like asset management. You need an integration point. And you won't get rid of those processes over there. You also need incident management. Uh, you need a possibility to do that. On the other hand, in the past, it was OK if some processes have been done by hand. Once in seven years, so what? Once every five minutes, <clears throat> doesn't work. What about creating certificates? What about revoking certificates? Something we didn't solve up to now. And we've got the usage and operation model. Uh, 
do your customers really know what they get? And do the managers know what you are going to provide? Because they think uh, you, we need cloud and then we put everything into cloud. No, I would like to have my pork with a crust and only that workload that is suitable to run there that benefits from that new environment should go to the cloud. You don't have to move everything over. If you've got a very efficient database running in classic IT, leave it there. The main uh, metric for a database in this classic world is stability. And I would like to keep it. Agility is not an issue there. So OpenStack is not a one-to-one -one replacement for this traditional IT, even if some people in-house think, hey, that's great. I don't need the whole process with financial approval and planning and my applications and the blueprint and stuff. I could go to OpenStack and get everything fast and easy. No. At the moment, our onboarding process is send us a mail, tell us what you're going to do, and then we have a talk. And if we think that you are the right person to go into OpenStack, you'll get a project. Otherwise, no. And we have quite a lot of people who just forgot to order a server, uh, who are just doing something uh, different because it was easy. And we have to send them back because they would be unhappy and we would be unhappy. So we don't win anything. Uh, and if someone goes to the cloud, it has always, you have always to answer the question, why? It's not uh, to show, hey, we are 60% in the cloud. I would like to show we are doing good business. We've got a business benefit. So the workloads that go there have to follow the typical cloud fundamentals. Scale out, deal with failure, expect the failure. In the first days, uh, we had the issue that me, we misconfigured something and the project was gone. Oops. In the past, we ha would have had escalations and uh, we lost millions and whatever. But here, okay, let's recreate it. We still have the data. Wow, cool. That, that was a completely new experience to us because now our customers internally don't think that they just get the service and they don't have anything to do with it. They cooperate. We've got community. We had, just last week, we had our first internal BMW Cloud Summit. We brought together all the people. Let them know what they are doing because what we saw that Within the uh, OpenStack environment, there are a lot of instances in different projects which have the same name. And it's not test, it's more elk or something like that. So people are probably doing the same thing. Let them bring together. It's not the same process as before where we've got one central operations team which creates a solution and everybody has to use it if they want it or not. No, here people create what they need. But you have to find a possibility, also a kind of process to bring the people together. And those people who are working in those areas love that model of cooperation. And it's really great. And so it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, within their OpenStack environments, people have got a lot of new possibilities. They can upload their own images. We thought most of the people would bring their own images. Nevertheless, we provided some. Let's provide Slash, let's provide Ubuntu, let's provide Windows. All of the projects started with our images. Great to see. So our assumption was wrong. We started with a 20% solution because we just wanted to do something. We wanted the feedback of the customers to see what's going on, what are the, the necessary features. We thought uh, CI environments would be the thing to go. A lot of CI environments out there, they need direct access to the network. They need an IP address which is reachable from the corporate network and easy to configure. So we created flat networks, provider network, Linux bridges. It was great in the beginning. No waste of IP addresses. Everybody knew how is it working. And then the new workloads showed up. Uh, analytics, 
big data. Hey, we need private networks, and hey, we need this, and bam, <laughs> wrong way. In the past, we would have waited one additional year to change that way to create a new solution, but here, together with the customers, we are moving on. Yes, we will need a downtime probably to re uh, configure the network to use Open vSwitch or any other uh, overlay technology, uh, open source, proprietary, whatever. Let's use what's best for our business. But in general, it's very important that the workloads know what they are doing and they could really benefit from cloud. You could put a lot of workloads into cloud and they will run but it's not sufficient to really get a benefit. Uh, cost is not the big benefit of cloud, if you have been good enough before. If you have got a highly automated, efficient operation of your classic IT, you won't have this big benefit in cloud because you just move around the effort within your company. And it's not just an infrastructure project, it's a business project, and the whole company needs to benefit from it. Yeah, what about the future? Uh, cloud is not an end in itself. And I hope that uh, all the people here agree. It has to be aligned to the business needs. Don't do it just to do cloud, don't do it just to be uh, the man of the year in your company before your manager, no. Do it because it's a, there's a benefit. And provisioning of OpenStack is, is the first step, but you have to continue. You have to create the services around. Uh, and the people have to understand that, live that new mindset. Then you've got a lot of possibility with OpenStack. And from a technical perspective, OpenStack is set. There's no other possibility for us at the moment. OpenStack is the right product to do it, but it's not a question of technology. Sorry to tell that here on OpenStack Summit, but to us, it's just a tool. It's a great tool, but maybe you're a businessman. What do we have at the moment? Uh, the biggest thing at BMW is, is the acceptance. We don't care about the size, but people talk about it. We don't make any advertisement internally. People show up from shadow IT. They say, hey, we heard you've got something great and we would like to participate. We've got another 200 VMs on some CA workstations under the desk. Ooh, how did you get that? But hey, they're showing up. They are coming to us. That's a completely new experience. In the past, we always had to push them towards central IT. At the moment, we've got about 50 projects from especially the new technologies, what we call the digitalization projects, car projects, connected car. Uh, people at BMW, we are not just a car manufacturer anymore. We are a mobility service provider. So we are doing new stuff, a lot of with mobile phones, with in-car communication, car as a sensor, uh, sending information to improve maps, to connect the cars, to warn each other. These people have got a complete different mindset. And most of them, of the, most of the 50 projects are of that part, of that number. Then uh, our uh, environment is at the moment 10 servers, 400 physical cores, uh, four and a half terabytes of memory. We've got a Ceph uh, cluster below. It's also uh, based on SUSE, SUSE Enterprise Storage. And we will need to extend it because people came in, first projects, uh, they need five, 10 VMs instances. And we thought, hey, they don't use that many instances. But when we talk to them and we do that, uh, this on a regular basis because you have to understand what they are doing, what drives them, they are just preparing the APIs. And then they told us, oh, I've got another 500 uh, at the moment on VMware. I would like to move them over. I have got another 100, another 200. So at the moment, we are busy with ordering hardware, preparing software, preparing network. They are just waiting until they really could uh, fire uh, with their uh, environments. And the use cases, continuous integration was the beginning. Now we've got a lot of smoke tests. Somebody would like to try something. Uh, Backend engines for these new dyna dynamic loads. Uh, big data analytics. We still have the big data physical farms, Hadoop clusters. Great, InfiniBand based. 
But for some workloads, they have to reinstall it for 14 days. That doesn't make sense. So they are using OpenStack as a front end now, as a flow over room. Great. So we really love how they use it. Uh, what's very important for us is that the community understands our needs. Uh, there have been some talk is uh, what's the right way for OpenStack to go? Is it the hyperscale or is it the enterprise part? I know enterprise is different, but I think from a business perspective, there are a lot of more, a lot more regular enterprises out there than the real hyperscale companies. We also have to work together. The enterprises have to define uh, the provide information. We are not coding. Sorry, we cannot do that. But we can provide use cases. We can provide test cases. We can uh, discuss with you w what are the possibilities, what are the, the real world problems and maybe real world solutions for that. How to integrate it? Where do we need something? Where is already something in place? Let's talk about that. And the last point, uh, yeah, first, uh, interoperability. I think the OpenStack Foundation did the wrong, uh, the, the right, sorry, did, 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 did the right step to have this interoperability check. This is really great because we would like to be able to switch. We are replacing our hardware, server hardware every two years, the vendor. We are replacing the vendor of our storage hardware every five years and so on. We would also like to be able to exchange the distribution if necessary. And the upgradability. This will be an interesting part beginning of next year. We don't know if it works, but we hope. Yeah, any questions? Oh, uh, do we have a microphone? Or? Oh. Great. So regarding the, the Connected Cars project, are yeah. you running the workloads of it, the machine-to-machine -machine applications on top of OpenStack? No, uh, we've got a combination of public cloud or virtual private cloud because it's not real public cloud, but it's, it's at an external host, it's off-premise, let's call it off-premise. We are combining off-premise, on-premise cloud and classic IT. So at the moment, they're just parts running on OpenStack but the front ends are better in this off-premise. When all the cars start driving in the morning, we cannot scale at that extent at the moment. So we would like to see a lot of these projects because it's just great to be part of that, but at the moment we are not running those on OpenStack. Yeah. Any other questions? Feedback, annotations? Do you have any plan to integrate a public cloud and your private cloud for future in the uh, future? We will use both worlds and we will try to integrate it from a business perspective. But we will not integrate it, at least at the moment, into the OpenStack landscape, for example. So there will be OpenStack for pri uh, private cloud, there will be the off-premise cloud, and if there are applications who could deal with both, they could run on both sides, but they have to take care. We won't integrate it on an infrastructure level. Feedback, uh, I think there's a feedback button on the, on the app. Send me some feedback what you think, because uh, it's, it's really interesting to hear what other companies experience. Maybe they have got ideas we could leverage or we could get into exchange and, and say, hey, we had a solution for something. Maybe you have got a problem where it fits. Usually only service providers show up and they always have solutions without knowing problems. Uh, it's it's for, just for the video. What about upstream contributions from BMW? <laughs> As I said before, uh, we are not able to do this upstream contribution because we are a huge team of two and a half people. Uh, we just don't know it. Uh, yes, it would be fun, uh, but it's not possible. We are not an IT company. 
our contribution is we tell Suze, hey, we've got some features we think a lot of people could use. Or could you make this part upstream? Sometimes it's small parts. Yeah, I did something I just provided to Suze, not upstream yet. I would like OpenStack to do a, NS, a DNS lookup in the main DNS first before giving the VM a name. Because as soon as we have got the name in the pool, it gets the right name and nothing like host uh, whatever. It helps us a lot. Uh, yes, it's not real cloud because uh, with cloud you shouldn't care about the names, but we're still enterprise. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> any more questions? Then, oh. Uh, how long uh, it, it takes for you to deploy the OpenStack into your uh, environment? So the deployment of OpenStack from an infrastructure perspective, uh, it was done within two weeks, three weeks. But it was not a technical issue. It's more, hey, I forgot this subnet. Hey, uh, I, we need to switch off DHCP for, on the network side. Uh, damn, I forgot to document something uh, in the system to get access for something. So the main problems when deploying for us have been process things. It's the process where you just don't know that you need to integrate. And also for specific workloads, we've got internally, we've got a, a process system for mails. So you need to sign an SLA with our mail guys where you just enter the IP address of your VM or your server, your name, your project name, and that's it. Okay. Then you get, uh, you can send emails from your instance. We didn't think about that, that you need to enter the IP address there. Uh, first, people would have liked to send mails, didn't work. And you cannot just create the SLA for the whole subnets there. So sometimes you, you think you are very close, and then you find another uh, issue within your landscape where you need to change something. But this is the way it goes. You start with a 20% and start. Don't wait until you have got 80% resolved. Just start. Some of the people could already work. Even at 20%, some people had a big benefit. Trainings. One guy showed up, we've got a Cisco training, I need uh, 20 VMs with a specific image. Impossible in classic IT. You won't get your images, you won't get it that fast, and you won't get it where you need it. And you cannot control and reinstall. And OpenStack is amazing for that. It's, maybe it's not the most prominent example for using OpenStack, but it helps. And so it helps is the answer for the why, and it's valid. So earlier you mentioned you guys only got two and a half people. So is this like a brand new team you guys spun off from BMW to <laughs> from the traditional IT to do this, or did you guys you know reach transition the storage guys, the, the network guys, and the system M guys? I'm just trying to figure so out how, how you started at the beginning. With the first project, we said it's important to reach the people, and you have to have them behind you because they have to support you. Uh, it was because we had this deep integration into the old processes. Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm responsible for Linux architecture and solutions, which is classic. But I'm also responsible for OpenStack. There's another guy. So I'm not working 100% on OpenStack. Sometimes it feels so, but uh, it's not. Then there's another uh, internal guy who came into the team uh, from a, a daughter company. He's working 100% on OpenStack, and there's one other guy who is just uh, migrating some stuff from this daughter company and also works with OpenStack. So those people know and understand our traditional IT. And I think it's a good point, because if we would be completely new, with a new mindset, and you would try to send a mail. It wouldn't work. So you need to know the issues of the past and sometimes also why has this been created? It would help to have more people. It would help to have more dedicated people. 
of course, we talk to the networking guys. Of course, we talk to the storage guys. So, it, it, but they are not part of the core team. And in terms of operations, we are moving now operations over to a, a hands-on provider, our provider who is also doing the, the Linux operations, because we cannot do 24-7 uh, operations with two and a half people. So we will concentrate on architecture and solutions, and there will be a provider doing the operations. OK. Time. I think there's another session afterwards, right? Uh, but uh, they have to wait. Okay. Uh, so one last question, I guess. Um, what are the supplementary tools that you guys use to support the OpenStack environment? Who? What are the tools? We're integrated in Nagios. OK. Reporting and uh, some visualization, good question. We would like to have something. Uh, other tools, we've got some old, or, no, not old, it's uh, mature uh, <laughs> installation mechanisms. It's great. We've got installation mechanisms, bare metal, which install a server from scratch, including firmware, BIOS configuration and stuff within 20 minutes. We don't exchange that. So we still use something out of the classic IT. But really, tools for OpenStack specifically, uh, there are not too many. And what we are really in need of is reporting. So basically, you use really vanilla OpenStack without no backup, no? Uh, indeed. So okay. yes, uh, backup is on our post-it uh, area. Right. We need some kind of backup. Uh, we need some kind of shared storage. Right, OK. But uh, not at the moment. OK, thanks. Okay, so thank you for coming, and yeah, don't forget the feedback. Thank you.